Hello. Welcome back to AP Computer Science. Today we are going to look at a topic called overloading. And we've actually experienced overloading a lot. The definition of overloading is when a program has more than one method with the same name. So when we think about some of the other things that we've done in the past, we've actually done this with other methods. Each method does the same kind of operation. If we think about a method we've looked at like printline, printline takes many different kinds of arguments and all of them print that information onto the, the screen as a string. But printline can also do calculations, it can do all kinds of different things depending upon the arguments that are sent to it. So the operation happens based upon the set of data that gets sent to it. Another example would be the substring method. When we looked at this, we saw that it takes either one parameter, excuse me, one argument to be mapped to the parameter, or two arguments to be mapped to the parameter. Both of them return part of a larger string, but the arguments get mapped to a different set of parameters. If we take a look how we would create this, what we would do is we would have two different methods, both of them with the same name, both of them returning the same kind of value, but they have a different set of parameters. So the first one has two integers as parameters and returns a plus b as an integer. The second one takes an array object as a parameter and then goes through a for loop and adds up all the values and then returns that total. Both of them will find a total. One finds it of just two integers. The other one takes a array object. When we run them, this is how they would work. The first one, we have our two integers. We call sum from the main method. It Java knows which method to use based upon the number and type of parameters that are listed here in the arguments. So those arguments are mapped to two integers. So Java knows to look for the method that has two integer parameters. In this one, it's sending it a vals, which is an array object. So it's looking for that uh, argument to be mapped to something. And it finds a method that has parameters that are an array object and maps that. So Java is doing a lot of that work for us in the background. The only thing we have to make sure is that we are using the same name of the method and we have the appropriate arguments to send to an existing overloaded version of that method. So the way we tell methods apart is by the name along with the number and type of parameters. We call the number and type of parameters the signature of the overloaded method. So in this case, we have sum is the name, the signature is int a as an array or int a comma int b. Those are the two different signatures of that overloaded method called sum. Be aware, the signature does not include the return type. So since the parameters are exactly the same, Java here would cause an error. You cannot have a return type difference for two methods of the same name and the same parameters. This isn't going to work. Java is going to have an error here because, in essence, when you're calling the method and let's say you're saying add 5, there's nothing in that call to add 5 that tells Java which return method it should be using. So when you think about it that way from kind of sort of Java's perspective and utility, it makes sense that Java can't do this. Java can't have two different return types and have the methods with the same name and the exact same signature. That just isn't going to work. So I'd like you to give it a try. Pause the video write two overloaded methods called max. 
The first one should find the max of two integer parameters. The second one should find the max of three integer parameters. Now there's a little trick here. If you think about it, you can use the first version to finish the second version. Pause the video. Give it a try. Okay, we're back. So if we take a look at this, one way of doing this would be to say int max is a, b, and if a is greater than b, return a, otherwise return b. Pretty straightforward. Then we could do int max where we have a, b, and c, where we say if a is greater than b and a is greater than c, return a. If b is greater than a and b is greater than c, return b, otherwise return c. This second version here, yes, is functional, but we actually can do it in a much cleaner way. But it does work. When we call max xy, uh, this one is two arguments. So Java is going to look for the method that has two arguments. And then this one, max xyz, it has three arguments, and Java is going to look for the method that has three arguments. But really, we could get kind of creative with the second method. You see, max ab finds the max of a and b. Then I could use that method again and find the max of that result along with C. So in essence, I'm using this max method that has two different arguments, excuse me, two different parameters, A and B, and really using that functionality to write a method that has three different parameters, A, B, and C. This is an important skill to learn in computer science. You don't rewrite code. There's no reason to redo something that you've already accomplished. If we look at the previous version of this, in essence, we're redoing a lot of the work. We're already first trying to figure out which is bigger, A or B. And then if we figure that out, then we got to worry about C. And in reality, we already have a method that does that. We already have a method that determines which is bigger, A or B. So might as well make use of that first and then compare those two values, the resulting larger value of A or B, along with C. So if A is the biggest, it's going to then call max of A comma C. If B was the biggest, then it would call max of B comma C. Either way, it is still functioning and returning the correct value. So this is a good thing to remember when you're writing overloading methods. To try to use a version of the overloaded method when you're designing new versions of the overloaded method. Why do we overload? Well, it's more efficient. Rather than coming up with 10 different names for the same functionality of a method, it makes more sense to have one name and really just send it a different signature, different sets of arguments, and have Java handle that for us. So it's definitely more efficient. It is easier for us to remember and much easier for us to work with. The idea of overloading a method is part of a larger topic called polymorphism. And this is when you allow different values of different data types to be handled using some uniform interface. Uh, in English, we have one name to describe many different things. On the computer, you might have a mouse click. And depending upon where you click, that's going to perform many different actions. So the next thing I would like you to do is take a look at the practice assignments here, try the exit ticket, and I will see you next time.